Hello, how are you guys this Sunday? We're taking a look at some YouTube shorts for several different days of eating. We have what I eat in a day as a food lover, <laughs> what I eat in a day as a fat person, this poor girl, uh, what I eat in a day trying to lose weight, what my pregnant wife eats in a day, and then we have another weight loss one, but it's a guy. So we're going to see, you know, maybe some difference between the, the female and the male ideas of what weight loss is. And then we will see what I eat in a day, New York City cheap. So <laughs> hopefully some crazy girl doesn't jump into my apartment later trying to assassinate me, but uh, we'll see what I say about her. This doesn't make sense to me because it's a food lover, but she's drinking an athletic green smoothie. Uh, and I'm guessing they've made a ton of money from poisoning people's livers with green slop, but um, go figure. People think vegetables are healthy. As someone that just loves food, here's a realistic what I eat in a day. We spent the morning perusing our local market and on our way home, I followed the scent of freshly baked croissants to this new bakery and it took everything in me to not buy the entire store. We ended up getting a chocolate twist filled with custard and mini chocolate chips. And I guess a like, controversial fact about me is that I'm a raisin lover, so we got a pale raisin. So at face value, people think these pastries are unhealthy, but that's because there's a big difference between the American and the French version. You know, using GMO, agrochemical filled American wheat with vegetable margarine and seed oils and all this low quality crappy ingredients versus regular French flour with butter and, you know, high quality sugar. There, there's such a huge difference in it, you know, poisoning your body versus actually having something that's not bad. And the chocolate's a decent source of minerals, but again, the ingredient quality is key. Which is this flaky, buttery croissant with a custard filling and a sprinkle of raisins. And I know this is a pretty bold statement, but I think these were the best croissants I've ever had. Mm. It's kind of like Paris moved in right down the street from me. And it was family pizza lunch day today, and we got a margarita pizza and a... Bungie. And lots of arugula salad. I can't... I mean, you know, the, the pizza and the arugula salad... I can't believe I went 21 years without have? adding chili oil to my pizza. It will transform your pizza experience. Just The problem with this meal is a little imbalance from a fat soluble vitamin perspective. So when you have a croissant, you know, you have some butter, which has fat soluble vitamins. You have a lot of carbohydrates, starch to feed the gut bacteria. In the case of like pizza and chili oil, you're getting a lot of vitamin A, you know, and the nightshades and the flavonoids and the pizza. It's not something I would eat you know, every day, especially a whole pizza. Just trust me. And throughout the day, I ate some fruits, a few bites of cold pizza and peanut butter cups, and then I had late night noodles. I mean, I mean, yeah, eating pizza all day, again, fat soluble vitamin imbalance, you know, unless you're in the sun all day, it's kind of hard to have that much vitamin A from the, the sauce and the cheese. Uh, peanut butter cups, in some cases, aren't actually that bad if it's just dark chocolate and peanut butter, and it's organic, but in the case of what she's having, that's not organic. It's pretty inflammatory watching a cute little romance movie because February is the month of love. So show yourself some love by getting both croissants, enjoying as much pizza as your heart desires, and buying yourself. So she could have redeemed herself with this last meal, but it kind of went in the opposite direction. Uh, the problem with these Asian places, they tend to use low quality ingredients and then douse the food in vegetable seed oils and MSG and chemicals. So it, it's really, really bad. You don't want to be eating this stuff every day. Uh, I mean, maybe not even once a week, to be honest. But that kind of opens up the problems with her diet, uh, the lack of animal protein mainly. Yeah, it's okay if you have a croissant for breakfast, but then if you're going to have pizza for lunch with like cheese as your only source of animal protein, and then you're going to have a big plate of pasta for dinner, you know, you're not having any red meat, steak, even like pork or chicken. It's just really, really lacking on that front. So if, if she had a nice portion of animal protein in each of these meals, she'd probably be a lot healthier overall. What I eat in a day as a fat person who's healing their relationship with food. So I was doing a little bit of a fridge clean out and I had to eat this rotisserie chicken before it went bad. Also, if you don't like Brussels sprouts. What I eat in a day as a fat person doing a fridge. I mean, just a fridge clean out does not sound like a good idea for a fat person to be doing, you know, cleaning out the fridge. Maybe like an excuse to eat more food and think they're too bitter. Put some honey on top. It gives them such a good taste. <laughs> Like, this is honey on Brussels sprouts. I mean, just don't eat the Brussels sprouts, please. Like, that doesn't that defy the purpose? Look, I, I, we, we don't care about the calories in, calories out stuff. The uh, food quality is the most important thing. But what these people do in some cases, it's just so funny. It's just so ironic. Honey it's the on only Brussels way sprouts. I eat my Brussels sprouts now. Then for lunch, again, I'm trying to clean out that rotisserie chicken. So I made a chicken salad and I dipped it with some chips. Usually I crush my chips up and put them in the
That was not a salad. That was like a buffalo dip. Salad, but why did no one tell me it's so much better when you dip them? Then for dinner, I- Like sneaking half a bottle of mayo and some ranch and some- What else did she put in there? That is- That is not good. That is very- I mean, chicken, especially conventional rotisserie chicken, is super inflammatory, high in omega-6. Main re you know, if she just replaced the chicken with red meat, she'd probably start losing weight. And then all that other crap added to it is just chemicals and vegetable seed oils and really, really bad. So, uh, you know, this poor girl is probably restricting calories while still eating high omega-6 junk foods, which is just going to make it very hard, if not impossible, for her to lose weight. And she's going to have a really bad body composition. I saw a post on Facebook of a steak and I had to have oh, steak. Okay. So I ordered in a steak from Longhorn and paired it with a potato and salad. And this was so good. Oh, and I forgot to... So that's good that she had a steak, but it looked like she just had some like sour cream with the potato and then the salad again with the vegetable seed oils. The biggest issue with this diet and what she's been eating is every single meal is chock full of high omega-6 oxidized vegetable seed oils. Yeah, you don't want to be eating low quality conventional chicken and having a lot of omega-6 every meal. I mean, she had Brussels sprouts and chicken for breakfast. Sounds disgusting. She had the same chicken for lunch and then threw some mayo in there, more vegetable seed oils. And then, you know, for dinner, the salad is the issue. I think if she just had the steak and potato, it wouldn't have been that bad. All right, I think she's speaking Hindi and English, so it might be a little confusing. Hey guys, welcome back to one more mini vlog. So, I what I eat in a day. I am trying to lose weight. Yes, wedding, I am weight put on. So, first thing in the morning, I protein smoothie. Some of these uh, influencers, what they do is they make the videos in both English and their native language. So, they'll like say the English phrase first and then it's kind of confusing. I have a lot of vlogs in Just to oats, banana, and protein powder. One scoop. So oats, banana, and protein powder, it's not that bad. Uh, we've spoken in the past about how bananas can be inflammatory to some people's gut, you know, pretty high in anti-nutrients. And protein powder is generally not a great choice. You know, just having oats and banana with like a, another animal protein source would probably be better. If you do go grass-fed on the whey protein, I guess that's better, but a lot of people just don't tolerate protein powder. And afternoon ki two chapatis with some chicken. So 100 grams of chicken work with into non prestan kaite and... So chicken and naan is, you know, I mean, it's a pretty healthy meal compared to what people are eating. At least you're getting animal protein and the naan is a pretty minimally inflammatory source of carbohydrates. Uh, but obviously like a red meat like goat or beef or lamb would be uh, much less inflammatory than chicken because of the omega-6, because of what they usually feed the chickens in comparison. And uh, rice thin at ledu, na ko lunch tarvata sweet cravings chala echoes thai. So better option na roj na khani ne gana padindi. And snacks ki bailed into nanu, it intlo jaisindi homemade, anta healthy gadan delsu. I have no idea what that was. It looked like some type of puffed rice or granola with honey on it. So from a snack perspective, actually pretty healthy. You know, just like a, a whole grain source with a small amount of sweetener added, actually very, very good. First day, I didn't have alternate option. I didn't have to complete it. And finally, for dinner, I had a little egg omelette. That's my dinner. And I didn't have to start it. I hope it's... All right, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty confused. It looks like she just had an omelet with dinner. Maybe she had some bread with it. So if you go in high quality organic pasture raised eggs, you know, you're getting some animal protein. But, you know, we can tell she has a pretty healthy body composition. And uh, I mean, of course, coconut water is really high in electrolytes. Yeah, it looks like some type of granola with nuts in it and a little bit of sweetener. So may maybe a little high in omega-6. No, I mean, she, she looks healthy, like her body overall. You know, this is one of those girls that's seeing these super skinny model influencers that are starving themselves to death on these ridiculous diets, and she wants to try to look like them. But I think this girl's pretty healthy. She doesn't have to lose weight. But if she swapped out, um, you know, her current protein sources for higher quality ones, red meat, to reduce the omega-6 intake, I think she would have uh, her ideal body. Her, her composition would improve slightly. I think she'd be happier. All right, then we have the pregnant this wife. This is everything my pregnant wife eats in a day. First, she makes this breakfast sandwich, which is not Starbucks, by the way. So that looked really good. Uh, just eggs, cheese on a croissant. High calorie, nutrient dense, great for someone pregnant. Then she makes her little happy green juice that makes her feel really healthy. So that's bad. I mean, especially that much green juice. The amount of flavonoids and anti-nutrients and mineral chelating. This, uh, these companies need to be like 
served class action lawsuits for making people think these green smoothies are healthy. It's completely ridiculous. She absolutely destroys the sandwich in a matter of minutes, and then she moves on to this like five layer dip situation. Then, so five layer dip again. She's eating calorically dense, high animal protein, high fat, high cholesterol foods, which is probably in line with her natural pregnancy cravings, which is awesome. It's perfectly healthy. Uh, pounds through four cookies. And she absolutely pounds through four cookies. And most cookies have butter and egg in them, and they're really calorically dense. Uh, the only thing you have to be aware of is that we are now in high radiation environments and we're not getting as much sun as we should. So from a fat soluble vitamin balance perspective, you know, we really need to get more vitamin D by being out in the sun and getting more vitamin K2 by either supplementing it or making sure our gut is healthy enough because of the uh, impaired probiotic function from the high radiation. That's my girl. This is her using all of her five foot four power to squeeze some jelly out of a bottle. <laughs> then proceeding to eat peanut butter and jelly Ritz crackers, which is kind of weird. To balance out all the junk food, she eats a whole box of raspberries. And then she started randomly craving shredded mozzarella cheese from the bag. Fine. Yeah, I mean, this is this is like actually one of the, the better day of eatings. At least she's going with her animal food cravings and basically stuffing herself. Finally, she eats her entire dinner, then makes daddy proud by going back for seconds. Rawr. So for dinner, she's having a uh, red meat sauce, some bread, a bun, pasta salad, and sweet potato. So everything she's eaten today, for the most part, has either been animal protein, very high in saturated fat and cholesterol, or incredibly calorically dense, excellent for feeding the gut bacteria and putting on weight. So it's an amazing day of eating, you know, as I said, especially compared to what a lot of other women are doing. I'm sure her kids are going to be a lot healthier than the majority. However, you know, the few things that are overlooked you know, not getting enough sun, uh, not eating all organic foods, taking the green smoothie. That's the difference between having like a healthy kid versus like a model looking kid. So who knows? Maybe, maybe she's in a good spot. Maybe she could be doing a little better. Then we have this other guy trying to lose weight. Here's everything I eat in a day after intermittent fasting. So on Saturday, my mom was in town and I only did a 16 hour fast. For lunch, we ate at the Loop in San Marco and Carrie and I split a Mediterranean salad and a mushroom pizza. The salad had feta cheese, Kalamata olives, red onions, and was really good. The pizza had this balsamic glaze on it that was super good. After lunch, Carrie... You know, you go on a fast and then the first thing you do is go to like a moderate quality restaurant and have a salad and pizza. That's not good, you know. You, you want to be having some really high quality animal protein and um, if anything, go for like a high quality organic grain instead of um, some vegetables and salads. And Carrie and I stopped in at the Grape and Grain Exchange for an afternoon cocktail. I had this sweet mezcal and pineapple drink that was amazing. I've really been on. I mean, you're going to fast and then you're going to have alcohol. That's definitely not what your body needs. A mezcal kick lately and look forward to trying some more. When we got home, I opened a package from Truff Sauce that they'd sent and thought it would be good to try them out. They sent the hot sauce, the hotter sauce, and the white Truff Sauce. They were all really good, but the white was probably my favorite. For dinner, Carrie and I went on a date to the Alhambra Dinner Theater to see a Patsy Cline show. I had a glass of J. Lore Cab there and I really liked it. And for dinner, it was a three course meal. I got the potato soup as an appetizer and had a roll that was good. And for my main course, I got the crusted mahi and that was amazing. The green beans were really good. And for dessert was a lemon pound cake. So I have not as much of a problem with that dinner as the rest of the day. Uh, you know, potato soup and bread for appetizer, at least it's calorically dense. You know, he's having some fish for dinner, which is a good source of omega-3, a good source of animal protein. And having an actual high-quality restaurant-made dessert, you know, with a lot of saturated fat and stuff and butter and eggs, it's not bad. It's not the worst. Uh, but overall, the diet definitely needs some more animal protein. And especially if you're going to have that much alcohol every day, you really need the B vitamins and stuff. So... Uh, I, th I think he can definitely improve the food quality and ratios of animal protein to <laughs> alcohol a little bit. So let's see what our new potential girlfriend this eats. This is what I eat in a day in New York City. So, of course, I had to get some coffee. I went to Dunkin' and got an iced latte with blueberry and vanilla. I mean, you know, just starting your day off with, like, fluoridated rotten bean slop to destroy your adrenals is not not healthy you know it, it's a testament to how these young people can withstand so much and still be functioning so good then for breakfast i have the same thing every day protein shake with banana peanut butter chocolate cinnamon vanilla protein powder and then i blend it up with some almond milk this so that's like a, a kind of what a normie thinks is healthy 
uh, if that's whey protein, it's not as bad. But if it's like a plant-based vanilla protein, then it, you know she's just having a vegan uh, sugary bomb full of anti-nutrients, the almond milk and chemicals and synthetic vitamins. It's just not that great. You know, you really have to go all organic. You want to keep the ingredients to a minimum. You want to make sure you have a good, high-quality source of fiber and that everything's like a whole food, but definitely not what she's doing. So yummy. Then for lunch, I decided to make an omelet, so I got my ingredients together. I started by cutting up some mushrooms and grape tomatoes, and I sauteed them in a pan. Damn, what, where's the egg joke? How can you make a New York City cheap video and have eggs in it, you know? Then it's time for my egg. So I used two egg whites and two whole eggs. Don't worry, my dozen was only four bucks. And then I whisked it up with some almond milk. I mean, it's, you know, it's good. It's good. At least we have animal protein in the diet. Poured it in the pan. And then of course I added cheddar cheese and I decided to make it scrambled instead actually. And I added in some spices and this turned out so good also. Then for a snack, I had a honey crisp apple. And of course I had it with cinnamon and peanut butter. Delicious. Then for dinner. I really like that lunch and snack. You know, to me, an omelet and then having an apple with peanut butter compared to what most people are eating, at, at least it's not super high inflammatory. It doesn't have the oxidized vegetable seed oil. She's getting in um, she's getting in some of what her body needs. Dinner, I made some air fried tofu, added in with some veggie fried rice and sea salted edamame. So good. And then for dessert. So if she actually had some animal protein in that fried rice, I'd be like, good, excellent. But the tofu... Omega-6, not giving her body what she needs, bad. You know, just having the animal protein in the diet, it, it's, I can't stand it. All these people, most of the ones we've seen today, if they just put in some steak and some red meat and some good stuff, they'd be so much healthier. Sir, I had Tate's cookies. It was so yummy. This is what I eat in a day in New York. So I, I've read the label on those cookies. They're actually pretty good. You know, they do use eggs. They do use butter. They do use some natural ingredients in the, in the Tate's Bake Shop cookies. So... Kind of similar to, you know, the first two girls, you know, we would like to see more animal protein in the diet, but outside of removing the tofu, she's actually eating pretty, pretty healthy. Yeah. I guess if we avoided the Dunkin' in the morning, it'd be that much better too. But thank you guys for joining me today. Hopefully you've enjoyed seeing uh, some variety in these day of eatings and you've learned a little bit. Um, yeah. There, there's a lot of common things that people generally do wrong. But, you know, I mean, can we really blame them when the food quality in America and the presence of, you know, vegetable seed oils and everything, especially animal feed, is the, is the real issue. Uh, so you guys can go to frank com if you'd like to check out all of my businesses and support me. But outside of that, guys, please drop a like on the video. Leave a comment down below. Subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week. And be sure to check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. Thanks for joining, guys. And we'll see you soon. Thank you.